Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the Bengal Tiger Recruiting Podcast. I am Billy Embody. Shay Dixon is along for the ride on this one. We've got a loaded podcast for you guys today, recapping a major Junior Day weekend to kick off March for LSU. We've also got final thoughts on some new Louisiana offers and recruiting Louisiana, and also some notes from Under Armour Orlando as well to cap off the podcast. But let's jump in, Shay, with in my opinion, one of the biggest visitors, maybe outside of the two that ended up committing this weekend, five-star or future five-star quarterback in 2025, Bryce Underwood, the number four overall prospect in the country in his class and the number one quarterback in the country. I caught up with his dad on Sunday evening uh, while I was in the uh, lovely Orlando airport, and he raved about this visit. This was a big visit for Bryce Underwood and his family. He's wanted to visit LSU really since he started this whole recruiting process and the first weekend that they could get out uh, and make a long trip down to LSU, they did. Uh, They've been around Michigan, Michigan State, Ohio State, a lot of the schools nearby where he plays high school football, where he's won a state championship. But now he got down to LSU and coming off the weekend, and it's early, I would say LSU is firmly in the race for this one over the next year at least. Yeah, that's one question people have is kind of when do quarterback dominoes start to fall? And it's typically after your junior season. And he just wrapped up his sophomore year. So as Billy noted, maybe a year to go, but this is when the foundation starts to get laid in terms of the teams he's serious about. And when we talk about Bryce Underwood, he's a kid from Michigan, from Belleville. I think Michigan's campus is like 30 minutes away. Michigan State's is a little over an hour away. So he's been to those schools a ton. He went to games and all of those um, different type of events over the past year, two years, really, uh, with the Wolverines and Spartans and in in, Ann Arbor and East Lansing. This, I think he went to Ohio State in December, checked checked out a couple schools in January, but his dad had said they were like ready to reset things. February was a dead period. They were going to put together the list of schools they he really wanted to see and move on from there. So for LSU to get the very first visit, and I know his dad, whenever he caught up with you, said they didn't have anything locked in yet. I know I've heard buzz that Ohio State will probably get the next visit because now Billy teams start spring practices. So guys get invited in for that. Twofold here. One, you want to be swinging for the fences at quarterback. They've already got Colin Hurley locked in for 2024. You've got Ricky Collins on campus for 2023. The focus now is on 2025, and they only have two offers out, George McIntyre, who will visit later this month, and Bryce Underwood, who just visited. That's it. McIntyre's from Tennessee. Obviously, Underwood's from Michigan. Those are the guys he's going after heavy to start. Obviously, giving them an offer lets them know uh, that the interest is, is very sincere on LSU's end. I think that LSU has positioned themselves to where they are a very real threat, not threat, very real team in the mix here. I mean, I talked to a couple sources, not even at LSU, that had said, hey, look, he has always talked about wanting to get down to LSU. If they blew it out of the park on his couple day stay, he's going to be high on them moving forward. Now, Ohio State is another team outside of Michigan, the state of Michigan, the team that I think people are watching as a program that certainly will be very much in the mix here. Georgia made an offer. They're going to try to get him to campus. So a lot, the who's who of everyone's going to be recruiting him. Here's my flip side of that. The other thing I want to say, I've talked to a number of college coaches who think he's probably the best quarterback prospect to come out in the past few years. And that's over Arch Manning and Nico and all of those guys. I mean, he is Billy, a sophomore in high school, a little, little bit over 6'3", 210. There's thought from almost anyone you talk to that, Oh, this is a guy that could be 6'4", 235 in college and can absolutely sling it. He can run, which is a big part of his game as well. Um, but arm talent-wise, about as good as it gets. A rare prospect. I think I won't speak for Charles and Cody and the On3 Rankings team, but would be surprised if he doesn't debut as the number one uh, quarterback in the country, obviously, but also can he debut as the number one overall prospect in the country on the On3 industry rankings He is the number one quarterback, but number four overall. That's the kind of guy we're talking about. So to get him to campus, that could someone who could potentially be the number one overall recruit in the class, 
to be in on him at this stage is huge for LSU. And I think it shows that LSU as a brand, as they make the transition to the Brian Kelly era, has real staying power with recruits all over the country. This is a Michigan kid who has no ties to LSU or Louisiana. Yeah, I saw Bryce Underwood at Battle Miami, and he was coming off a little bit of a tweaked shoulder and was just kind of getting back into throwing. Boy, I mean, the, the ball just jumps off his hand. He's, he's won back-to-back -back state championships in Michigan to start off the first two years of his high school career. He was named the National Gatorade Player of the Year uh, coming off of his uh, you know sophomore season. He's a sophomore Gatorade Player of the Year, which is incredibly impressive. I mean, just nationally to earn that award. He just does it all. Um, son of a coach. His dad's a coach. And so they have a very good understanding of the process and how this thing works. Uh, they were really impressed with how LSU laid out the plan and not necessarily said, hey, you're going to be a first round draft pick here and you're going to go to the NFL and we're going to win a national championship. They laid out everything from now until, you know, when he would graduate or when he would, you know, head off in three years to the NFL, however it worked out you know, how it would happen, which was something that really caught their eye. So I think going in, it was a visit that he wanted to take because it, it's LSU. I've, I've, I've watched them. I like what they've done, the NFL pedigree. But now I think it is a little bit more serious than that. It, they have put their best foot forward in this recruitment. Um, I agree with you on Ohio State. I think that's a school uh, that's going to get them on campus for spring ball and certainly uh, be a big factor in this recruitment going forward, as will others. But LSU has positioned themselves very, very well to start, which is all you can really ask coming off a of first visit. And last year, they had had guys like Dante Moore on campus early, but they were still just getting going as a staff. Joe Sloan's been recruiting a lot of these guys now for a year or so and, and really have, has built up a relationship with them. So now you're not necessarily playing catch up on other relationships. Now you can roll the ball out, so to speak, and really see um, if LSU can, can land him out of Michigan. And we've seen number one, like Arch Manning made a couple of visits to LSU's campus, but they weren't going to get him. And everybody knew that early on. Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, like those guys came to campus, but they knew they weren't going to get him um, even then. And they were number one quarterbacks in their class. Both of them kind of flip-flopped. They were in the same class for those that don't know. But I can remember when Trevor Lawrence came to campus uh, as a high school prospect, LSU, gosh, it might have been Cam Cameron at the time, had gone into his high school to try to get him in on a visit. And at that point, Trey, uh, Trevor Lawrence had had like 50 offers and was already so deep into his process. And LSU was like, okay, we're going to offer and get you in on a visit. We're going to, we really want to recruit you now. And it's like, man, you are late to the game here. Joe Sloan's done a good job to where they're not late to the game here. Bryce Underwood is, has an LSU offer, but you know, right when his sophomore season wraps up, he's got the visit. So even if they don't get them, this is the work you need to do. You need to be out in front on national quarterbacks so that when their junior season wraps up and they're not far from a commitment, you're not coming in saying, hey, you want to come to campus? Hey, you know, we'd like to kind of turn up the heat on you. That's already being done. So you mentioned Brian Kelly, the path, uh, graduate champions, all that. Uh, his dad even told you, look, I'm not going to give you too much that Brian Kelly said, but it really fits with what we envision in terms of what we want to see from Bryce as a student, as an athlete, and then taking his career to the NFL. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think, again, you go back to that's what you want. You want them to have that kind of run uh, with Bryce Underwood to start things off, put your best foot forward, really, really show what you can do for him with that plan. I think that's one of the most important things when it comes to recruiting a guy like this. LSU has – you know, Ricky Collins on campus, Garrett Nussmeyer would still be on campus if they got Bryce Underwood, Colin Hurley's committed, he's won state championships. They have a quarterback kind of run going right now where they're going to, you know, kind of have to, you know, sell a plan. And, and that's important in this sense. And look, no disrespect to anybody on LSU's roster or in the future if they were to get him, but this is a guy that, is like you said, Shay, a generational talent. Now you still got to go out and prove it and all that, but that's the kind of talent that they're kind of looking at bringing in potentially. And I, and I think it's important to note that when you when you kind of come across, you know, how they're going to have to uh, go about recruiting and and getting these guys on campus. 
Uh, Shay, I do have, um, actually, if I can figure this out, uh, a couple pictures of Justin Fields and Trevor Lawrence uh, from uh, their visits to LSU um, from that time. For those that are, are just listening and not watching, oh, he's done it. He's done we it. Do not have Maddie B on the pod today. He's the ace of uh, knowing how to actually work all of this. We're bouncing back and forth on the the YouTube version here. This looks here great. Right now, we're just seeing Billy. That's tough. Um, it worked for a second. I saw I saw the Trevor Lawrence on campus photos. Might just have to bail on this segment here. Oh, there it is. There it is. So there he is, Trevor Lawrence on his visit. Looks just like he does now. He really kind of does. Uh, it's pretty pretty uncanny, actually. Um, but yeah, so there it is. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, what could have been, would have stopped Joe Burrow from coming to LSU, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, no. you're happy with how things played out. Yep. But LSU's hoping to get happy uh, with Bryce Underwood one day down the line, and that, that would be a huge, huge piece. Uh, yeah, I'm, puzzle for, for I'm telling you guys that you're hearing Bryce Underwood's, many of you are hearing Bryce Underwood's name for the first time right now. He will be talked about like the Trevor Lawrence's and Justin Fields and Tua's and all the guys who, you know, Arch landed at number one uh, in the quarterback rankings. So big, big, big time prospect. LSU did extend a new offer as well uh, in the state of Louisiana as we move on to kind of the safety look. Obviously, LSU offered Ahmad Bro over the weekend and got him committed and flipped from Duke. They also got Collage Cobbins committed, which we talked about both of those guys on the last podcast. But Joel Rogers, the four-star athlete safety from West Feliciana, added an offer from the Tigers. Shay, you caught, caught up with him a little bit. This is somebody that is you know, really – skyrocketed up the rankings for on three made his move as a safety prospect. And now you got to feel good coming off the visit. If you're LSU. Yeah. He plays quarterback and safety at West Feliciana right now. And he's been a guy who no doubt is their best athlete. We had him ranked as an athlete. When we moved him into the on three top uh, 300, uh, we moved him into the safety category. So now he's ranked as a safety, which is what he's going to play in college four star player. And someone who in Louisiana, I talked about this on the podcast the other day, that you don't want to not offer. He goes to school like 30 minutes from campus, basically, or 45 minutes from campus, you know, in St. Francisville, not far at all, right up the highway. And he's got Oklahoma. He's got, you know, a number of big time offers from out of state schools. If he's there in the backyard and you've evaled him and you feel good about him, get him to campus, spend some time around him. They really like him as a kid. Uh, Kerry, you know, look, Kerry Cooks has been recruiting him for a while now. There's been the reality that they've kind of pushed thinking, hey, we may offer at a spring eval point or at a summer camp. But instead, they went ahead and pulled the trigger now. I really liked that because don't let it play out any further because that's when out-of-state schools start to trend a little bit. Then you're playing from behind. Then a Bama or a Georgia or someone comes in before you do, and suddenly you're really battling. Just make the offer when you feel good about it. And that's what they did. I love Joel Rogers. I think we have him as the number four player in the state right now. And we've talked a lot, Billy. The state rankings are going to shuffle up so much. But he is a no doubt top uh, five, ten player in the state. However you want to slice it. These guys all have senior years still ahead of them. Um, but they need safeties. We're going to talk about a couple more. But I like Joel Rogers as one where get him in the boat whenever you can. Because they've already started off with Maurice Williams, who – is one of the top 10 safeties in the country. How can you build from there? What other guys can you add from there? I love going after Joel Rogers right now because there's others. Deshaun McBride, he doesn't have an offer yet, but plays at Denham Springs safety. If they miss on some of these out-of-state safeties, you don't want it to fall back on nothing. You want to be recruiting the Louisiana guys, maybe get some of them on board. Joel Rogers fits that for me. I, I really like the offer. Yeah, I, I do too. And, and I mean – like you mentioned, he's he's got the safety tape. He's got that actual experience on the side of the ball. We, we've talked about it a little bit. I mean, I think if you're looking at who's next, I mean, I think he's got to be one of those guys that you circle uh, that LSU has to feel good about. He, he's going to probably take some other visits. He's going to do his due diligence uh, potentially, but uh, he's really somebody that, you know, right down the road, you've got to get him on in the boat. If you just offered him, you went through your evaluation, 
Uh, he's somebody that is now one of those must-get guys in Louisiana for LSU. They do have a pair of other prospects, though, at the safety position who were on campus this past weekend. Uh, one of them, the number two safety in the country, Xavier Philsame out of McKinney. Um, really, really impressive guy who moved from corner to safety as a junior and has now continued to rise up the rankings. He was on campus, very high on LSU. There are a bunch of teams involved there, but he was on campus as well as Fort Bend Marshall. Uh, kind of riser, has really blown up over the last month. Josh Lair uh, made his way to campus. Both of those guys now have offers from all over the place. Um, Josh Lair is going to take some other in-state visits, he told me, but LSU is squarely in the mix for both of those guys as well. It's interesting. You don't see a lot. And look, with Phil Same, he put up a video for anyone who's interested. I don't even know where you can find it, but I don't know if it was, he had his dad or maybe somebody was YouTube. with him. It's a video. Yeah, it's on YouTube. Sure. I don't know what you'd have to Yeah, what you'd have to search to find it. But he like recorded the whole weekend. So you kind of really get a feel for what these kids are really doing on junior days. Um, I watched about 15 minutes of it. It was like an hour long. So um, but it was pretty cool. I plan to watch the rest of it um, for folks that kind of just want to get a good feel for for what these weekends look like, what all they do, the touring, the presentations they give them, eating, uh, crawfish, all the different things, the setups. Um, it was just cool to see. And I, look, I just like I said, I watched maybe 15 minutes and then just kind of clicked through it. But uh, well, there you go. Damn. Billy is all over. This is why people need to be watching on YouTube. Now he's playing everything. So that's Kerry Cooks, the safeties coach. That was talking to him. He's walking now. They're walking back through uh, towards the locker room uh, and the indoor facility is what you're seeing on the screen right now. So, yeah, whoever Jake Fisher, dude, he's got some videographer with thirty thousand subs filming his stuff. That's what we're hoping to be. This man's got a whole highlight reel going. So they've obviously cut up. Uh, oh, look, that actually looks like old school stuff. That's uh, that was Justin Jefferson. There's Stingley, uh, but kind of cool. I'd, so what's the title of that video? What a five star visit looks like. And then you could probably just type in LSU uh, and it would come up. But a nice safety weekend. I'm impressed with Kerry Cooks so far because I feel like they've done a good job this class now that he's had a full year to really recruit a lot of these kids. And it seems like he's made good relationships in Louisiana. He's gotten into Texas uh, with a number of guys. And I really do think when you look at Josh Lair, and I'll get your opinion here. You've talked about him really blowing up as of late. He's got what Tennessee, A and M, Baylor. I mean, there's all sorts of offers. From talking to him, and I'll give you some quotes here. Um, he went in on January 17th. He got his first offer by February 17th, so mid February, a month ago. He basically hit 20 offers, so it blew up for him uh, in a very small amount of time. But he told me. LSU, AM, Oklahoma, TCU, those are sort of his big offers that he would consider him uh, to be pretty serious on. And, and he was looking forward to LSU because this was his first time getting over there. Leaving the weekend, Billy, where do you put, like, is he someone who could legitimately be trending to LSU? Or, like, you're in Dallas, you get a feel for these Texas kids and him being a, a Fort Ben Marshall kid uh, out of Missouri City. Is AM like really the team to beat? Can TCU keep him home? Or, as he talked about, DBU, that's a big offer. Is is LSU kind of the allure of it and the push they're making enough to take a kid out of Texas like this who, as you said, look, he's not even ranked right now, but he's blown up. So whenever he gets ranked uh, for the 2024 class, I would imagine it would be a pretty uh, lofty ranking if it's matching his offers at least. Well, I, I will say this. Uh, for LSU fans out there who are on our board, we, we talk a lot about dream schools here and there. And, and Josh Lair did call a and a dream school. So by the LSU mathematics on that, uh, that should rule out the Aggies in a way for him. Um, but all kidding aside, I mean, this is somebody that is right down the road from Texas A&M. I will say the safety position in Texas and just kind of overall in the country, I mean, you know, the offers that go out from LSU, the offers that I'm seeing a lot in Texas, it's a pretty packed group of safeties in the state of Texas. I would have to go through, but it wouldn't shock me if there were six, seven, four-star safeties in Texas alone, um, whether you're looking at the on-three industry ranking or even by on-three. But 
Um, and that's without Josh Lair even be, being rated or updated um, in that sense right now, really gone into a deep dive on what he can bring to the table. But he is somebody that I would say you've got to watch out for Texas A&M. Um, that's going to be a school that if they turn up the heat on him, uh, they'll certainly you know be a factor. I think Baylor is one that really stands out uh, to him, as does TCU. I mean, look, you said it. I mean, those are some in-state schools that are really – you know, on him. And I, I think when you look at Josh Lair, you look at Xavier Filosame, LSU is now in position to be right in the mix for both. And that's kind of all you can ask for right now in March. And we talked about it on the podcast. This is the time that, and somebody asked us on the board, are we o over or under one and a half commits from this weekend? And well, we both went over and LSU already has two out of it, which is a good thing. But this is when you lay those foundations. The, the foundation was laid for JV and Tobiano. The foundation was laid for a DJ Chester. This is a time when you do that, and then you get them back on campus for the most part in the summer. Um, I know JV and took it to the fall, but you get them back on campus in the summer, and then that's when you strike in July when these kids are all making their decisions for the most part if they want to get them out before senior season. And I think LSU is in the mix to get – very much an official visit from both of these prospects. I think Oklahoma is a school that Xavier is particularly fond of. I think they're doing a really nice job recruiting him. I would say Josh, LSU is doing a really nice job recruiting him. But, you know, those hosts of in-state Texas schools, we've got to watch, um, you know, as we track that recruitment. But they do have a lot of options of safety uh, in this cycle. And I just think they're doing a really nice job stacking the board. Kerry Cooks is a one of those good guys out there recruiting. He's obviously got to continue to clean up uh, in this room. I mean, he could be the beneficiary of a JV and Toviano playing safety, but uh, in terms of recruiting for his room, he's got to keep keep rolling, keep moving in the right direction to, to kind of continue that makeover because that's a room that needs that influx of an Xavier Phil, Phil Same, a Josh Lair, um, a Joel Rogers in state. Those are the types of players they really need back there. Yeah, I'm looking at the national rankings, uh, sort of top 25, top 30 at safety. Uh, and LSU's in on a number of them. Look, Kadavian Dodson Walker uh, being another another coming out of the Duncanville area, uh, right in your neck of the woods, uh, Wild Bill. So I'm interested to see how this plays out because, like, they've, like I said, they've already got Maurice Williams on board. Where do you start to build from there? You've got a couple of guys. You've offered Joel Rogers in Louisiana. You may offer a Deshaun McBride in Louisiana. We're, we'll see if there's others, but – You've got to be able to get out of state and lock in some of these guys. And I feel like Kerry Cooks and Texas are sort of uh, a match made for themselves there because that's where he's doing a lot of this work. So nice weekend for the safety spot. I would put it up there as one of the three or four best position groups that uh, came in town over the weekend. And uh, we'll see again, like you said, where, does, where do we go from here? Certainly you'd hope that at least one or two of these guys as you move forward stays very serious with you and becomes someone that you could potentially land, uh, whether it's in the spring or summer or moving into the fall. The wide receiver group is becoming one of the most intriguing ones for LSU. They had four guys we're really going to hone in on. Jelani Watkins out of the Houston area, uh, Draylon Miller out of Texas, uh, Noriel White out of Mississippi, and then Zion Kearney out of the Houston area as well. All four guys are very much being recruited by LSU. And all four are very different in terms of their skill sets. Jelani Watkins, he's a speedy slot, one of the fastest players in the entire country. He added a track offer from LSU while he was on campus. Jalen Miller, who's been a really a standout basketball player, there's a lot of questions on which one he would go for. Uh, quite honestly, when he was really coming up, he added a basketball offer. And then you have Noriel White, who's been a top target for Cortez Hankton for a while. And then Zion Kearney, who is certainly somebody that LSU is recruiting. They're in his top six. It's going to be an interesting recruitment to kind of follow and see how that one unfolds just with who ends up uh, stacking their board a certain way uh, across his top six. But all four guys are four-star prospects, very much heavily being recruited by LSU. You know, I always think that – and you talk about a guy um, in Jelani Watkins who got offered – and this is a kid who's running like a 10 2 one in the 100. It was wind-aided, granted, but that's blazing. He's a state champion in Texas already um, on the relays and in the 200, which he had a really – I think he went sub-21 in the 200 on one run. So speedy, speedy guy would be 
He's a little bit bigger than Trendon Holiday, but would be that type of like Darius Davis, who went to TCU and is actually from West Feliciana. He could be that type of player in my mind, someone who, as he gets older in his college career, becomes a real receiver for you. And, and before that can do a lot of return stuff. But running, and I'll get your opinion here, running track and playing college football, none of this is easy. That's the easy yes, because I think that a lot of these guys, we've seen it happen time and time and time again. Maybe Kerry Vincent was the most re- recent, maybe who did it both, but like plays football and then he'll go out and run sprints in the spring, whether it's um, with indoor or outdoor, whatever it might be. And if LSU's got one of the best track programs in the country. So you've actually have to be really, really elite to do both. And, uh, and he was able to do it. So I could believe if a kid like Jelani Watkins wants to go to LSU and be serious about doing both, you can do it. We've seen a number of kids over the years do football and baseball. It's tough. Baseball is a long draining season, but these kids who just grew up and fell in love with the game have done it. Chad Jones did it. Jerry Mitchell did it. A number of kids did it. Basketball and football don't mix for me. It's almost impossible to pull that off at the college level. The seasons overlap. um, Just the time you would have to put into, but it just, it's almost impossible to do. So is there a sense early on of what it got? Because there is that conversation to happen here in Louisiana at East Feliciana with Trey Daz Green, who has college offers for basketball and football. Like, does a guy like that in Draylon Miller, or excuse me, in, um, in, uh, in Draylon Miller have to make a choice and a Trey Daz Green? Do you have to make a choice eventually that I'm playing football or basketball? Because I think Marcus Spears and maybe Michael Clayton – They were all ballers back in the day and they tried both. And like after a week, it was like, this isn't working. Like we're done and left the basketball team. So are you with me where you have to choose one or the other? There, there is no both. Yeah. I think with football and basketball, I mean, you got to choose one or the other. And I, if you're, and I I think Draylon Miller, especially is a type of athlete that if he applied himself to either one, he'd probably have a chance to be rather good at both at either one. But are you going to catch, you know, a thousand balls in the off season and then go shoot a thousand three pointers or, you know, free throws or whatever, do all those, that amount of work. I mean, that is just, it's, it's insanely difficult to do. And like you mentioned, the seasons overlap. So you're not even going to get really preseason work with the basketball team. If you take the two sport um, route, you're pretty much a walk on on the basketball team. I mean, you, and for accounting purposes, so to speak, football is a scholarship that you're there for and that you count towards. So they are going to make sure you give them the most. I mean, that's just the reality of it. There aren't many schools that would say, "All right, well, you're missing football practice and going to go, you know, play in an out of conference game or, you know, what do you do on Saturday?" I mean, there I mean, it was hard enough when um uh oh gosh, uh the uh you know, Florida State quarterback who, you know, flew one day to play baseball game and played in the spring game the morning of. Um, James? Yeah, James. James Winston. You know, Kyler Murray did that here or there. Um, that's insane to do in baseball season and you're out of, you know, season in football in a right. sense. So there's just no way to really overlap it. I think it's more of a nice to have if you're a prospect. Um, you're going to get recruited for football and you're going to be expected to play football um, because that's where your scholarship's coming from. So, with all that being said, I think LSU has put themselves in really strong position, especially with Noriel White, Jelani Watkins, and uh, Draylon Miller. I think those are three that they have really put themselves in strong position for. Zion Kearney is kind of an interesting prospect. LSU is recruiting him. He's got a top six. They're in it. It just is kind of a weird recruitment to kind of track, so I'm not ready to put him in that boat just yet. But I think having those three guys that I mentioned on campus, and all of them have been to campus before, but back on campus, that would be a heck of a haul. And then you toss in a a Kobe Young type um, in the state of Louisiana. Yeah, so mention that. Um, They do have – well, they have a receiver committed um, in JoJo Stone. I would would say that – I don't know how like Jojo Stone's taking a lot of visits and he's from Georgia and he's being recruited by a lot of different teams. Like it's almost like if you're Cortez Hankton, you need to just continue to recruit as many guys as possible because you just don't know where the chips are going to fall. He committed really early too. I'm not saying 
I think he's going to decommit or anything like that. I'm just saying it's the reality of where you're at recruiting a Georgia kid. Kobe Young, who you mentioned out of, out of Holy Cross in Louisiana, he is the only Louisiana receiver with an offer right now. And I've said it a million times on the podcast. Like, rem- try to remember the last really good LSU receiver that wasn't from Louisiana. And it's like who? Terrence Tolliver, Brandon LaFell. I'm, and again, I'm going back well over a decade now. These guys are like out of the NFL and done with pro careers and all that. The state will give you great athletes and great receivers. But if there's not enough of them, like if you don't feel like beyond Kobe Young, maybe there's another guy that gets an offer, but you still need a couple more. Here's what I'm okay with, what they're doing right here. You got a junior day weekend, bring in the, okay, you want to recruit Mississippi? Don't go up into North Mississippi and trying to be fighting kids who are from the Starkville area or around Oxford. Go to Mississippi Gulf Coast and recruit Nora White, who is closer to LSU than he is to the in-state schools like Mississippi State and Ole Miss. Go into East Texas and recruit all these kids who they view it as, well, look, if I'm leaving the state, LSU is not so far away. Like my parents can drive to every game or they can hop on a quick flight. That's not a big deal to me. They've always recruited Texas. Well, that's great. Don't go to California. Don't go. And I look, they went into South Florida and pulled off a a shocker last cycle to get Jalen Brown, but don't get yourself too caught up in Florida. Don't go over and rely on half the class being from the East coast, recruit Louisiana, recruit South Mississippi, and recruit East Texas. And I think that Cortez Hankton is doing a pretty good job of that this cycle in terms of building beyond just JoJo Stone. Yeah, I agree. And of course, JoJo is going to be a really interesting case, you know, when we look back on his recruitment, because he's either going to stick and obviously everyone will be happy. You sign a four star slot who's you know, pretty impressive and dynamic, or he's going to be somebody who was exactly kind of what it looks like. He's going to take a bunch of visits, wasn't actually fully committed, but tell you what. The man says all the right things on and off the record, uh, wears LSU gear all the time. I I know I'm not trying to be a gear tracker, but I mean, every video uh, is in LSU gear. He plays with Louisiana bootleggers, so we'll see. But if they can reel in a Jelani Watkins, uh, Noriel White, um, you know, uh, Draylon Miller, I mean, they're going to be thrilled. And look, there's more receivers that are going to be coming through this spring. I mean, there's a lot that are going to be on campus this weekend, including JoJo Stone. Uh, so they'll I, I got to give Cortez Hankton credit. I mean, we heard we had heard that there were going to be some receivers on campus that ended up saying, OK, I'm going to come for, back for a practice instead. And lo and behold, he gets what five four star receivers on campus this weekend. It's, it was it's a really impressive job he's doing so far. Uh, speaking of kids wearing LSU gear and how committed they are or not until you're in that Bengal Tiger Founders Club hat, I consider you to be a soft commitment. If I see you out there rocking the Bengal Tiger Founders Club hat, I know you're all in. Great transition, Shay. Uh, Be sure to be on the lookout for our Bengal Tiger Spring Special. A big deal coming up for people to join the BengalTiger.com. You can also get the Founders Club hat. We still need a prospect to commit and put on a Bengal Tiger Founders Club hat like on National Sign Day. Could you imagine that on ESPN or another outlet that, you know, does I'll just in. take one throwing it. It can be the decoy. I just need it to make a brief appearance. Yep. Yep. Like in the LSU Texas baseball game. Um, this is a, a great deal. Check us out. The Bengal tiger.com that uh, deal will come out on Friday Shay, or Thursday, Thursday, yeah, March 9th. So it's Thursday, yeah. Thursday when spring ball starts. So check it out. The Bengal tiger.com. If you haven't gotten your hat, check out the instructions on the board. We bump them up every few days. If not, Send me an email. We'll get you the hat. It's we free. also have to stop. If you're a member. If you're a member. It's free if you're a member. It doesn't even cost you any money. So yeah. get the hat. We also have to talk about our friends at Rogue Shop. RogueShop.com. Promo code Bengaltiger. Tiger. Uh, we just had Richard on the site uh, in a uh, thread, chatted up with people about their uh, great products that they put out. They're a craft cannabis company, a husband and wife outfit, veteran owned. Uh, uh, CBD uh, tinctures, um, you know, creams, uh, pre-rolls, gummies, all of those things. Uh, if you have trouble sleeping, uh, have pain, anxiety, uh, insomnia, all those things, Rogue Shop is taking the Bengal Tiger subscribers by storm. I think we saw, what, three threads started about uh, the great work Richard and Shar are doing with Rogue Shop 
on the site alone last week. So um, shout out Rogue Shop. I was especially sore after hockey last week, Shay. We talked about getting old and doing that whole song and dance. I took a couple pucks off the leg uh, and just put the cream on and was able to sleep like a baby. You're too old to be out there swinging the sticks, Billy. <laughs> it's cross-checking, Che. It's cross-checking. And some people wear masks for a reason. Uh, I guess swinging the sticks would be a golf term. I'm not into either of them, though. Uh, but I was on the site uh, the other day, and I did to point, want to point out, because we have not talked about this yet. And this is everything from, like, CBD to Delta 8s, um, a variety of different uh, options you can go with. And when you get on the site and chat, like we said, you can talk to Shar or Richard, and they'll walk you through it. Uh, but they do now have an updated uh, with even more stuff for pets, whether it's like, you know, pets going through arthritis or back pain, whatever it might be. They've got it all listed out uh, of different liquids um, and they now have beverages, CBD and THC beverages on the rogue shop. So uh, a couple of things that I did not spot before uh, that are on there, but uh, it looks like they're fully stocked across the board. Nothing really going on. Uh, out of stock. They keep a pretty good job of, of everything up and available. So yes, shout out uh, to Shar, shout out to Richard uh, and everyone on the site who uh, has taken part. It's been a, a big success so far. Yep. Promo code Bengal Tiger. So check them out, rogueshop.com uh, and they'll get you guys taken care of. It'll be uh, quick and easy and you'll be feeling good and, and ready to take on the day. Speaking of ready to take on the day, Brad Davis had a stacked recruit. Hey now recruiting group on campus i mean this is my number this was my number one group stay hot brad davis uh he had some of the most highly thought of especially from on three's angle prospects on the offensive line on campus the top ranked interior offensive lineman casey poe out of lindale texas was on campus and lsu is already going to get a return visit from him uh when i caught up with him they had caleb holmes out of georgia a four-star offensive lineman Marcus Muscol, uh, another riser out of the Peach State. He's picked up a lot of big offers lately. Blake Frazier, a four-star offensive lineman out of Texas. Of course, there are two commitments, one in 2025, Brett Bordelon, and in 2024, Kyrie Lee. Uh, LSU did a really nice job uh, getting another strong group on campus uh, this past weekend. Yeah, where do we even start to run down this list? I'll say this. Brad Davis has turned in, and he's their offensive line coach. You'll remember he was the interim head coach uh, for the stretch between Orgeron and Kelly at the bowl game, uh, which made him the first black head coach in the history of LSU football, which is a really cool moment for him. And, uh, look, he's a Baton Rouge native. His first job was at Southern Lab. He went to Bel Air. So he knows how to sell Baton Rouge, right? He knows what LSU is. He grew up around it. He played at OU. He won a national championship. So he can sell what it takes to win a national championship for an offensive lineman. And then I think I just keep looking back, Billy. He was at kind of when he broke through into the SEC as an actual offensive line coach and not just like a GA or something like that. He was at Florida. Then he was at Missouri for a couple of years. But when Sam Pittman was at Arkansas, and remember Sam Pittman had left Georgia, and Sam Pittman was considered one of the best offensive – is considered one of the best offensive line minds out there, right? And Brad Davis was his right-hand man. He brought him – he wanted him to be his O-line coach there, so he was at Arkansas in 2020. Then Coach O came in and replaced um, – what? Not Jeff Grimes. Uh, I'm blanking on uh, – oh. oh, man, everyone else is probably screaming it. He got in trouble, and then they had to fire him. And Hold uh, on. Googling. Then he sued him, and he got his money back. Oh, man. Uh, James, James Craig. Craig. Oh, I beat you to it. James Craig. Uh, <laughs> I was right on the tip of my tongue. Uh, anyway, so Brad Davis comes in and replaces James Craig. And he was the only guy that stayed from the old staff to the new staff. And he got to be the interim coach. Brian Kelly has a history with offensive linemen. He knows how to develop them. He's had a lot going on in the NFL. He clearly saw something in Brad Davis that he liked, at least enough to keep him on staff. And now he's stayed on staff. Then we saw him get Zaylance Hurd, five-star offensive tackle out of Louisiana a year ago. He also got Tyree Adams, the other top Louisiana offensive lineman. He goes into Georgia and gets two really good players, including DJ Chester, who everybody wanted. I look at him and I'm like, Brad Davis is rolling. And, and I say all that to say this. I look at this visit with, and I'll, I'll allow you, because you actually did catch up with a few of these guys, Casey Poe, Caleb Holmes, Marcus Muscal, Blake Frazier. I talked to Brett Borderline. I'll, Chime in at the end on some stuff. He said commitment Kyrie Lee. 
when you want to talk about guys who maybe could eventually end up in this class, I could point to a couple on there and say they've got a pretty good shot at it. I look at that list and I just say he did the best job of any position coach getting guys in this weekend of that are high caliber LSU offered that they want. Use that first visit off the dead period to LSU, get it done. He went out and did it. So kudos to Brad Davis. I was very impressed by his group this weekend. And not to mention uh, Nate Kibble, another really impressive offensive lineman out of the state of Texas is being recruited by everybody, it seems like, as well. So we forgot to mention him. That one is seems like more of a stretch coming out of Atta, uh, Atta Sacita, uh High School in the Humble area, but um, a very, very good prospect nonetheless who's been recruited by LSU for a while. As far as Casey Poe goes, he's somebody that I was – kind of pleasantly surprised about as far as hearing what he had to say about it, LSU. He's had this visit circle for a long time. He is somebody that's being recruited by OU, Texas, Texas A&M. He's got a bunch. I think he sent me his list of visits and it's it's like like 15 schools. So he's going to visit just about everywhere on his list. He's going to check out. I think he's got Clemson, Auburn, and Georgia this upcoming weekend alone. So he is taking visits. Then he's going to cut down his list. Uh, and go from there on his officials. But he's already planning to get back to LSU. And this is, again, kind of the perks of recruiting regionally, Shay. You have a guy who's in East Texas, and that puts you, shoot, he's about two hours closer uh, to LSU than Dallas already. It's about a four-ish hour drive if you do it right. Um, and, and so that is not a bad situation to be in where you could get him back get him to spring practice, say, hey, when you've got a free pocket of time, swing back through, we'd love to have you. And of course, they want to get him on campus for official. But I tell you, LSU did a really nice job with Casey Poe. They also left the weekend uh, sitting at the top for Marcus Muscol, who's been that big riser out of Georgia. And it wouldn't shock me. I picked this up while I was down at Under Armour Orlando. Caleb Holmes is at Creekside High School in Fairburn, Georgia. And there's some buzz out of the Peach State that LSU might be the top team entering the rest of the spring. Kind of similar to a DJ Chester, a guy that just really, really vibes with what what Brad Davis is selling. Yeah, and you mentioned Casey Poe being the number one interior offensive lineman in the country. And he's the number 32 overall player uh, on on three's rankings right now. So uh, it's a big time guy to get to campus. You mentioned... I'm trending really for a couple guys in Georgia. Marcus Mescal is interesting to me because Brad Davis offered him, did his evals, offered him, has been recruiting him, brings him to campus, spent a lot of time with him. Um, Billy, when you talked to him, obviously, it, it was very clear from reading his quotes that LSU's made a big impression. And I look around, he's got a Florida offer. He's got um, a couple of others uh, that are notable, like Georgia Tech, uh, Pitt, but it's not some long list of SEC schools. And I say that to point to this is a guy that before he really blows up in the spring and summer, I could see Brad Davis pressing to get on board. And because if you don't, all of a sudden all those other big offers come in and you're battling everybody. Right now, I think because he offered early, because he got that eval in during the season and didn't wait till after the season, that he's a guy that they seem to like a good bit at six foot five, close to 300 pounds. Uh, ranked as an offensive tackle. Again, I just feel like he's one to watch because I see LSU as a team to beat, and I'm not beyond a Florida. I'm not really sure who else is going to give LSU much trouble until other offers come. Yeah, and to men- not only to mention that, LSU was on him early. I'm 99.9% sure he picked up an offer in like October, and it was like LSU, Pitt, and maybe like an, an FCS or like a low, low uh, group of five that had an offer out to him. So they had this eval nailed pretty well early on. So it'll be interesting to see how that one unfolds. Florida just offered him last night, maybe this morning or whatever. But um, so he is somebody that, like you said, is picking up steam. Brad Davis is going to get the press on him. Uh, It's always good to have, you know, your commits on campus. Brett Bordelon, Kyrie Lee, both are really becoming key pieces to this class. One thing I picked up talking with some people about Kyrie Lee You know, he's somebody that flies under the radar. When he committed to LSU, he got the offer. It was kind of under the, all right, we want to see you, you know, drop some weight. And he did that. And so he goes ahead and jumps on board. He was like an 84 and we were the first to rank him. Now he's up to an 87. And talking to people kind of around college football and recruiting, there's a lot of people that are starting to really like what he's putting together as far as being an eventual 
just starter in the SEC, like a reliable starter down the road. You get him a new strength program. You continue to work with him on the off the field conditioning and and just getting his body right. And he can kind of capitalize on going to a place with resources like LSU. So I want to see more out of Kyrie Lee, but I'm I'm starting to come around on him a little bit. Obviously, when he committed, he was just such a big kid. Uh, but there are some that are that are really starting to see what the future could be for Kyrie Lee if he puts his head down and works. I uh, he was a guy Brian Kelly was spending a lot of time with on game days uh, in the fall too. You would see him on the sideline talking to him. But I did want to chime in here before we move on from O line Blake Frazier who. Um, again, another four star that visited out of the Texas area or out of Texas from Austin, um, but a top 20 interior offensive lineman. And look, he's from Austin. So Texas is going to be a big school. He's already rescheduled it and got another visit to Texas on tap. Michigan's got a lot of early buzz. A&M's in the mix. But when you talk just about LSU getting a kid like that to campus, you often think, OK, they got him in. He saw things. He moved on. And. Uh, maybe four months later, he commits to Michigan or he stays home and goes to UT. And, you know, he never really gave LSU much thought. I was talking to Brett Bordelon, who obviously is one of their offensive line commits for next year, but his father played at LSU. His brother's on the team right now, uh, and he's a really good player. He said that over the weekend, he was like, man, I sat with Blake Frazier and Brad Davis in the O-line room and just went over his film and different stuff for more than an hour. And he was like, you could tell that Frazier was all – like." He, we had his full attention. LSU had his full attention. So on these weekends, that's what you want to do. Like you get your kids around the position. You get your top targets around a position coach. You get them around other commitments and you just work them and, and see what can happen. And, and borderline, look, he didn't say anything like, oh, he's going to end up at LSU or any of that. But he said, hey, look, I've got the kid's number now. We're going to start talking all the time. Like I'm going to help recruit these guys. But I did want to make a note that even a guy like Frazier, who a lot of people just look at the on three RPM and say, okay, he's probably going to Michigan or they look at where he's from and they say, he's from Austin. He's got a Texas offer. He's probably going to Texas. Maybe those things are true, but LSU gets those kind of kids in and they do a really, really good job of making that full pitch beyond just, Hey, come over and tour the locker room and, um, you know, go through our different facility stuff and eat some crawfish. And maybe you get to meet Brian Kelly they go so far in deep with it, with a real plan. Um, and look, I think that's what we led the podcast off by talking about Bryce Underwood's dad, talking about the plan in place they had, how organized it was, how it was very kind of pointed to exactly what Underwood was as a player, as a person, all this. They do a really good job of that. So I just found that borderline note interesting that a guy like Frazier, who I would just sort of almost put it like as an afterthought on a weekend like this, where I'm like, ah, man, that kid's got a million offers. He's going to make a million visits, you know, and, don't put too much thought into it. When they get them on campus, they are working those guys hard. Yeah, Brad Davis. I mean, he is he has really put his head down and just absolutely worked that offensive line group. Um, you know, the last two cycles. So kudos to Brad Davis. What a group uh, he had on campus and looking to bring in another really highly touted group on the offensive line in 2024. You flip over back to the defensive side of the ball, and we'll close with the defensive lineman, who obviously everybody loves to hear about. They had a few really nice names on campus. They had Terrence Hibbler, who's been on the rise. Um, he, uh, I got a chance to see him at Under Armour Atlanta. They had Justin Green, a top 100 prospect on the defensive line, who was a top performer at Under Armour Atlanta. Uh, he came over for his first visit. They also had Cameron Beavers, who doesn't speak really to anyone from what I've seen on the recruiting front, but he is a massive nose tackle that they got on campus for a visit. And then they also had Caleb Moore, uh, out of Mississippi, kind of a strong side defensive end, you know, growing into a defensive tackle type body. Um, it's going to be a huge weekend this coming weekend, Shay. And and for those who are on the Bengal Tiger as subscribers, they know a couple of five stars are rolling into town. But the weekend that Jamar Kane put together, they add Ahmad Bro, get him on board. He's somebody that's going to be in that strong side defensive end room. Kalaj Cobbins can play Jack linebacker. He's going to play linebacker most likely, though. This is a group that they started out and, again, kind of laying the foundation for. Now you can get these guys back. A lot of them are close by. Uh, close by. Justin Green's in Georgia, a little, little bit harder probably to get him in the end anyway. But these guys are from Mississippi, and they just loaded up with these Mississippi guys this weekend with three of them and are, are just shooting their shot. And I, I think with a guy like Caleb Moore, they really made some strides. 
Shout out Caleb Moore, a uh, Hattiesburg native. I'm a Hattiesburg High graduate. He goes to Oak Grove, so not exactly uh, the same. Different sides of town, but uh, always good to see a Hattiesburg kid get an offer. And he's got a few. I mean, LSU's obviously Southern Miss has offered him in town, but uh, State's offered him, Bama's offered him, LSU, A&M. But the thing with Hattiesburg is that's closer than all those other places are. It's less than two and a half hour drive to get to Baton Rouge. It is not hard at all. You're going down one interstate get on another and that's it. So he's intriguing to me. And I like to eat like six, three, two He's got all those offers. I said, when kids finish junior years, like so many emerge at this time to where like we're catching up on all the rankings. He's not ranked by anyone yet. He could emerge as one of the higher ranked kids that we're talking about. He just doesn't have a ranking yet, but he's got every offer out there. So you caught up with him. He said it was awesome. Um, really like kind of spending time with Jamar Kane and Matt House, who sort of run everything uh, on the defensive side, certainly with defensive lineman Jamar Kane. But um, he talked about visiting Ole Miss. He's going to see Texas, Mississippi State. Uh, there's others, obviously, in the mix. But he wanted to have a summer decision. Again, we go back to what we said. If you're going to have a summer decision, you can't get in the mix in the summer. You can't be fighting for a visit in June. You need this visit. So for him to put his first visit out of the dead period on LSU before he goes to all these other places, that helps really set the tone. He'll be one I'm watching. I'm intrigued by him. Yeah, I agree. And and because of how quiet he is, and honestly, I, I haven't seen anybody get an interview with him unless it's been in person. Cameron Beavers, uh, the big nose tackle out of Mississippi, call me crazy, but I guess I got to be intrigued by him too because we really know nothing about him. So we'll try to dig up a little bit more as far as you know how the visit went uh, from some sources and things like that, but he's your, he's a nose tackle. I mean, he's exactly kind of what they would want in the middle, um, looking for a big body. Obviously they've got Dominic McKinley in state, who's a big body, but maybe more of a, like a Mason Smith, kind of a tall defensive tackle. Um, and they obviously have bro committed. They have some other defensive line targets, but this is a, this is a group that look, is starting off really well. They're going to get more, more of their top targets back on campus this coming weekend. So be sure to be locked into the Bengal tiger.com for that. Uh, Shay, let's close with this. You're going to give some final thoughts on on Louisiana, and then I'm going to just rapid fire some uh, Under Armour Orlando uh, buzz and tidbits and, and thoughts from that. What do you say? Uh, well, I'll, I'll just keep it short. I think that the current commits in Louisiana are doing a good job recruiting other Louisiana guys. And I talked to Kyrie Lee, Wallace Foster, Brett Borderlaw. All those guys were in this past weekend, and all of them talked about how like while like they rode over together, um, they were like they talked about playing a big role getting Kalash Cobbins out of Destrahan committed, but then said, Hey, look, we're working on Kobe Young at Holy Cross. We're really working on Wardell Mack over at John Errett. Um, Brett Bordelon talked about, you know, really getting in heavily on Keelan Moses, who's in his class, and recruiting him heavily out of uh U High, and another kid, uh, Lamar Brown out of U High. So I it's not often like I almost think kind of like after the like during the pandemic, things kind of got messed up a little bit. And then you had the coaching changes and then a lot of kids from last class from that were the top kids in the state were already going out of state. So you just for a few years lost a sense of Louisiana guys recruiting other Louisiana guys. And um, I can't remember. I think it was Wallace Foster who said it, uh, but he said that, look, I tell Wardell Mack every week. Yeah, you can go to Bama, you can go to Georgia, you can go to any of those schools, and maybe you could win a national championship, but you can do that here at LSU, and you can do it with all of us and all of your friends and in front of your home state and for your home state. And that's what LSU needs is the kids, the boots on the ground, that when you get them in the class, get them to start help recruiting everybody else. And I think this group does a really good job of that. I just wanted to sort of put that out there that from after talking to to those three guys, I'll say, after the weekend that were all there and being able to spend time around everyone, they are doing a very good job of recruiting other Louisiana guys. My turn. Uh, we are going to uh, kind of rapid fire Under Armour Orlando. Uh, was down there to see Colin Hurley, really, especially uh, throw around the football, and he was named a top performer by on three. And Colin just continues to shine, especially in that uh, setting. You know, he's got the ability with his arm strength, with his whip, um, and, and certainly with his uh, compact release to really impress. And he did that just that. He was the top quarterback in attendance. It was kind of a mixed bag, some kind of more um, project guys at quarterback who, who kind of had some intrigue, but not as much polish as Colin by any means. Uh, but he was very, very good. Uh, somebody that 
is now, by the time you're listening to this, probably in Baton Rouge, starting his almost week-long visit to LSU. So he's obviously firmly committed, talked about recruiting some guys, going to get them to uh, throw while he's in town as well at a random park. So Colin Hurley's just doing, um, honestly, you know what he has always done. He's been locked in with LSU. He's been a huge recruiter, especially behind the scenes. He doesn't really talk too much about who he's recruiting, uh, but he just got after it at camp, put in some really good work. Um, you can catch all the footage on the Bengal Tiger YouTube channel, so be sure to subscribe to that. LSU did extend an offer right after the camp to LJ McCray, uh, a really impressive, dominant defensive lineman uh, from uh, Daytona Beach area in Florida. Uh, he's about 6'5 or so, uh, really impressive uh true defensive lineman that picked up an offer. So now LSU uh, will enter the mix for him. He's pretty wide open, so it's a good time for them to jump on board. But he was impressive um, in one-on-ones. Alabama, Auburn, Florida, Florida State, Miami. The list kind of goes on for him. And then um, I will say John Daniels, uh, the five-star, the newly minted five-star offensive tackle. I caught up with him. You could catch that full story on the Bengal Tiger on Wednesday morning. He is going to visit LSU soon. Uh, he looked very fluid in drills, but he also had a little bit of struggles. His very first camp uh, in Under Armour, and and he, you know, just had uh, some growing pains. So uh, somebody that has a ton of upside. Brad Davis is all over him, uh, and and has you know a lot of good things to say about Brad Davis. Um, does does John Daniels? But yeah, those are kind of some of the rapid fire takeaways from Under Armour Orlando. And now I think Shay, it's time to let everybody uh, get back to their day. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, do us a favor. We spent an hour with you today. Do yeah, us a favor. We put in the time, keep helping us get to our next milestone, 4,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button for us. It takes just a couple seconds at the bottom of the screen. We appreciate all you guys that do. For Shay Dixon, I'm Billy Embody. Thanks, everyone, for listening, and we will catch you next time on the Bengal Tiger Recruiting Podcast.